I'm going to turn it over to Joy and, Ro, uh, Joy and Rose here uh, with their guest, uh, Michael J. Murphy. Kia ora, Michael. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Oh. We're very excited to have you here. Uh, Michael J. Murphy is the, uh, is what in the world are they spraying? He is the co-producer of. Uh, Michael is a journalist, a filmmaker, political activist, and his work includes several short films that address controversial issues. So um, I guess we'll get straight into it, Michael. We, we want to thank you for joining us. Um, we're very excited. Joy and I have followed your work since you began. And uh, you propelled us into uh, doing what we do today. So um, much uh, aroha to you for that. Joy, uh, are you there, my dear? Hi, hello, Michael. Hello, Joy. How are you? I am good. I know we've tried to get together and speak a couple of times, and it just kind of didn't work out between our two schedules. So I am very excited that you will be able to make it here with us today. Uh, I was wondering, Michael, if you might st start with just giving a brief overview on um, your movie and the whole chemtrail geoengineering issue for those that may not be familiar with it. Sure. Uh, what in the World Are They Spraying is an investigative documentary uh, into the issue of geoengineering, commonly called chemtrails. So uh, we went around and spoke with scientists, politicians, um, people who, uh, who have been affected uh, by these programs and who were well, well aware of it. So um, essentially that's what the film is. We actually finished it in Washington, D.C. There have been numerous congressional hearings on this issue. But uh, in terms of, I guess, summarizing the chemtrail geoengineering issue, geoengineering is defined as the artificial modification of the Earth's climate. So... That includes many things, including weather modification. Uh, there's a group of scientists, corporations, and uh, governments that desperately uh, want to do this and actually are doing it. We found out in our investigation that these programs have been started. Uh, they're very toxic to uh, both human health and, and ecology. Specifically, uh, the geoengineering, which uh, many people call chemtrails, are the very long white lines that we typically see in the sky that do not dissipate, and those are aerosols. Uh, most of them are aerosols from geoengineering programs or chemicals that are actually being sprayed into the sky. Uh, they're creating artificial clouds and uh, doing many different things to it. Uh, definitely different than what is commonly uh, called a contrail. Uh, a contrail is a condensation trail and it forms behind an airplane at certain elevations where it's very cold. It's actually ice crystals uh, which form from the heat of the engine. Uh, those usually dissipate in about four to five seconds, so they're definitely different uh, than what we're typically seeing on a regular basis, uh, not only here in the U.S., but around the world. And I understand New Zealand uh, has quite a few uh, chemtrails as well. Yes, Michael. I'm 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 glad you brought that up. I actually connected with you uh, earlier in the piece when you were talking about putting this show together, and um, we spoke about uh, the fact that I had contacted our then Mayor Kevin Hayes, done a two-hour presentation to him, showing him the issues in our sky, and uh, he then jumped on board with us and um, started connecting with the New Zealand government about this issue, and and then was. Um, you know, completely shut down with the whole contrail ice crystals um, version government event. You know, um. anyway, after that we actually had the quake, Michael. So um, I had been recording the skies at that point for probably a year and a half. A week before, or two weeks before the quake, I had said there was going to be one, although I didn't think it would be Christchurch. I assumed it would be along our Alpine fault line where they're doing all the weather making. And um, sure enough, we had the big 7.4, which they downgraded to a 7.1. Um, so that was just prior to you um, saying that you would be interested in getting out here to New Zealand. But unfortunately, we weren't together enough to have water tests ready for you. So um, it was it was very interesting timing, I thought. Very um, interesting. Mm, mm. 
and of course we know we know um, we know those of us that are here and observing uh, that that there is not very much natural about about the event that happened in Christchurch, and um, I, pr- I won't go any further than that with that, but uh, certainly. Certainly was um, was thrilled when your film came out, and you know, although I know you had many many areas that you could have taken that film into, we had to come out with a learner's level, didn't we, for people, so they had some idea of well, one, what was actually in these trails. There's other other arms to it, as as in more gallons and all these other things. But we, I mean, we're hoping that perhaps you know you'll you'll be bringing these out further for us anyway. We have um, a lot of members on our site now that have, have woken up to the fact that they have more gallons. So uh, these are issues that Joy and I have been tackling on other shows. Um, but, but today we're here to speak with you about the chems. So now, Dave, um, Michael, we, we, you know, we know that aluminium, strontium and barium, thanks to your good work, is uh, predominantly in these trails. But there are, there are so many other other aspects to it aren't there I mean you know there's been lead tested manganese magnesium um, there's just no end of it biologicals blood you know uh, blood cells um, iron uh, it's just it's endless what do you think the reasons for this are Michael well, I, I think there are many different reasons. I call these multi-agenda uh, operations. And in the film, we just covered aluminum, barium, and strontium because uh, pretty much that's where most of the testing has been done. And, uh, you know, our, uh, we, we started the, uh, the film at a geoengineering conference where we listened to geoengineers talk about the plans and proposals uh, for spraying 10 to 20 million tons of toxic aluminum into our skies, uh, which is very concerning. While they deny that these programs have been started, uh, there's mountains of evidence that, that proves that they have been. And uh, the amount of aluminum and, and, like you said, barium and strontium that's being found around the world is extremely high, uh, which is very toxic to our ecosystem. And uh, it's interesting because the second part of our film after the geoengineering conference, we went up to Northern California, and um, about seven years ago, uh, eight years ago, some biologists in, in the area were starting to get concerned because they were seeing a forest collapse, uh, not only common to Northern California, but from what I understand, common around the world. And uh, they started questioning why, why the, uh, the forest was collapsing and and natural uh, uh, systems were collapsing. So they started doing pH tests of the soil. What they found was extremely shocking. They found that the the pH of the soil was increasing. Uh, And we're not talking about like one to two times. Anywhere between 10 to 12, as high as 18 times the normal alkalinity. So they started wondering why the soil was changing, started testing rain, started testing snow, and uh, again, found massive amounts of aluminum, barium, and strontium. Those will change the, the soil, the pH from acidic to alkalinity, and uh, again, the, uh, the aluminum, which, is, which will change the pH of soil, is the primary ingredient in geoengineers' plans and proposals. So it was very, uh, very concerning what they were finding, and uh, those levels that they were finding had increased several thousand percentage points just in the past couple of years, and they've really seen profound changes. Um, just to get into basic science, uh, most people know that when a soil pH changes from, uh, from uh, uh, an acidic soil to alkaline, whatever requires an acidic soil will start to die. It's exactly what's happening. So they've seen just devastation within their crops, and uh, also within the forest up there. Uh, certainly, and we are seeing much of that here too. My, the, I'm an organic, well, I have a garden, and, and, you know, we eat out of that, and I test the pHs every year, and I'm just astounded at the state of my pH here. Now, Joy's been doing quite a lot of research into uh, what's been happening uh, with our plant life of late, have you got something to share there, Joy? 
Yes, I noticed when I was down at my my trip in California, and I was staying with um at Andrew Bridgman, and um he was showing me the plant life that was dying off down there, and a lot of it started with the palm trees. Um, the palm trees were starting to turn yellow and had big um, burn marks on the, or what looked like burn marks on um, the leaves, uh, and it mainly affected at at that time at first uh, the new growth that was coming through. But the queen palm in particular, when I was down there, um, I, I don't I don't recall seeing one healthy one. You know, and they're all over in Southern California. You know, every one that I saw was showing those symptoms of yellowing leaves, and they just were not healthy. Some of the other species of palms down there were actually shedding their bark, which we all know is is a protective measure to protect the the trees from the insects and and the disease infestation down there. I noticed it with the oak trees as well. You know, I, I did a couple of videos on the plant life die off down there. So I have certainly noticed that it is affecting that. And, you know, along those lines, Michael, <laughs> I have noticed, I just became aware because I just moved back into the valley portion of Oregon is where I'm at. And as everybody knows, um, Evergreen Air has been named as a key player, you know, in this uh, chemtrail geoengineering um stuff that's going on, you know, in the air above us. And much to my horror, I had noticed that Evergreen Aviation actually owns an awful lot of agricultural cropland in in the state of Oregon. And coincidentally or not, um, a lot of the farmers here that aren't uh, Evergreen Aviation, you know, um, Incorporated, they're, if they're not working for them, their fields, those farmers have had huge issues with getting their crops started up here due to the lack of sunlight and the increased rain um, that we've noticed with the ongoing chemtrails up above our skies. And it, it seems really interesting to me that the only ones that aren't really suffering these effects are the, is the agricultural land that's owned by Evergreen aviation so you know I was wondering if you um, have any thoughts on that and what you might think there are uh, their advantages here <laughs> well well I do and and I think these programs are a corporatization of natural systems and I often compare them to uh, the GMO seed market and what we saw in the GMO seed market and we're seeing we're seeing um, corporations taking and changing natural systems so that uh, things that were once, I guess, under the authority of nature or God or our creator now comes under the authority and the control of corporations. Why would they want to do that? Well, in what in the world are they spraying? It was interesting because we went to uh, went out to Hawaii and we stayed on in the organic farm and it was just uh, it was a wonderful experience. But the first morning that I woke up, I was really hungry and uh, it was my first time away from from stores and, and corporations, and I asked somebody, I said, I'm a little hungry, where can I get some to eat? And they said, well, just go and pick something off of a tree. And I said, you know, I'm not sure if I know how to do that. Um, could, could, could you help me out? And the reason I bring that story up is the way that the people live in that area is independent from corporations. Um, they're not empowering the corporations, and they're living the way that I think that, that we're created to live you know, just simply off our land. Um, their uh, lifestyle, I believe, is threatened. They've seen dramatic yields on their ability to grow natural organic foods. Um, I just went back there a few months ago and interviewed about five different farmers, all who have seen a decrease, a decline, I think up to 50 or 60% of their ability to grow natural organic foods. During our trip in Hawaii, we found out, we know conclusively that around the world, levels of aluminum have been increasing in our rain. We know what that can do. The concern is this. During that trip, we found out that there is a new aluminum-resistant GMO seed. So it's deeply concerning, and a lot of people in Hawaii, including myself, believe that this could be an agenda to destroy natural and organic